So AFL preseason action is officially here. Thank God. And I'll be honest, it snuck up on me. I did not realize that there was a game today as you're watching this. I thought the game started Wednesday, but we have a game today between Melbourne and Richmond. By the time you're watching this video, it's probably already happened. But in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what's happening this preseason, how all the games are structured, what the first round of fixtures is gonna be, and things I'm gonna be looking out for in this particular round. So if you're unaware, the preseason games are quite weirdly segmented this year. There's going to be one round of unofficial games, which is the round starting today between Melbourne and Richmond. And then we've got like a two or three day gap and I'll go through the fixture shortly. Then I think early next week, there's going to be another round of official preseason games. And then there's a four day break until opening round kicks off. So the football season in effect has kind of already started. And I tell you what, I'm stoked. For those wondering, I believe the first round of the fixtures will only be available on Fox and KO. And I believe the round after that will be usual programming. So if you're unable to watch the games this weekend, I'm gonna be doing my best to cover it all. And I'm thinking right before the second round starts off, I'll do a video covering all the action from week one. But anyway, let's start talking about the preseason games. Actually, sorry, there's two things I wanna mention very quickly before we crack in. Firstly, if you're an Eagles fan, I have just started a second channel called True Eagle. I have just released a video on that channel explaining exactly why I've done that. The second point of interest to you is I have just launched a newsletter for the first time on this channel. Essentially, a weekly email newsletter covering all the things that's happening in the AFL world on a weekly basis. I haven't quite worked out exactly what day of the week it's gonna be. But the reason for doing this is kind of just to have a different way of adding value for you guys as subscribers. And it also gives me an opportunity to just talk about a few little things here and there that aren't really worth an entire video on its own. And in some cases, I'll just link you to interesting articles or interesting stats I've found along the way. If you're interested in all, check out the pinned comment of this video. There's a link there to subscribe, and uh, if you're worried at all, of course, it is absolutely free. Okay, so we're gonna go through the first fixture of unofficial preseason games, um, and we're gonna start with Melbourne versus Richmond. And I realize this is difficult because the game is pretty much probably happening or already happened, but I'll, I'll talk about some of the things that I'm interested to see in this particular game. Probably for the Melbourne side of things, I am intrigued to see how Caleb Windsor goes in his first competitive hit out against another club. Heard really good things about him at training. Obviously the D's sort of picked him a little bit early in last year's draft. I realized Lockie Hunter as well has got a bit of an injury cloud. Maybe there's a clear avenue for Caleb Windsor into this team. Jack Billing should also be featuring in this game, if I'm not mistaken, another player who's apparently been burning it up. Although I do understand that Shane McAdam will not play due to fitness. As for Richmond, it, interestingly, they're resting a lot of stars under an injury cloud. So to be specific, the players that are not featuring this game include uh, Toby Nankervis, Dylan Grimes, Dion Prestia, Dustin Martin, Tim Taranto, and Tom Lynch. And as far as I'm aware, I think to different extents, they're kind of nursing injuries. I think Prestia's got a hamstring injury. Dylan Grimes is dealing with a calf. I don't think any of those are major injuries as such. But on the flip side, we will see an exposure to Richmond's underbelly of unproven talent, if you will. I like that, I'm gonna use that phrase again. But Josh Kipikis does return to the fold. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. And we're also hearing a little bit about new roles for certain Richmond players. These include Noah Bolter, potentially playing as a forward. Liam Baker's been heralded for some more midfield time. I've also heard through the traps that Dusty's gonna be playing more of a midfield role. That makes perfect sense to me. Shea Bolton might play a little bit more forward. Even Daniel Rioli might run through the midfield. And this kind of makes sense for where Richmond's list is at. But this will be a really good test for some of their unproven youngsters. I'd imagine this game is one-sided with the amount of outs that Richmond have, but who cares? It's about getting kilometers in the legs. Then there's a Wednesday game between North Melbourne and Collingwood. So a bit of a gap there. And from North Melbourne, I think the clear thing that I'm looking forward to seeing is how, you know, the new look team goes. It's a very new look team. First of all, the defense. There's been a lot of conjecture, including by myself, especially by myself, about how North Melbourne's backline is going to stack up this year. And we should see it somewhat exposed against, you know, the best team in the business in this game. Obviously, we don't know what the intensity is going to be, but it will be a good test for them. And it will be interesting as well. They'll be coming up against a team that probably doesn't have a really clear key forward. And that will be the other interesting thing about this game is the we'll see the mix of guys like Reef McInnes, Ash Johnson in this team. Those guys probably auditioning for that round one spot. But, you know, I'm a bit of a McKercher fan, and uh, he's one that I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for. The Thursday games include a Sydney derby between Sydney and GWS. Carlton will play Geelong, 
at Icon Park, and then we have a unofficial Q clash. So starting with the Sydney Derby, again, I don't have like official teams here, but I don't think there's any reason to suggest that Brody Grundy won't be playing in this game, as well as Taylor Adams and James Jordan. So a few fresh faces to see here playing for Sydney for the first time obviously trying to cover up the gap left by Callum Mills due to his injury. As for GWS, I believe that Callahan is not going to be playing in this game, nor will Harry Himmelberg. I think a couple of minor injury complaints for those boys there. As for Carlton and Geelong, you know, this game will probably just be a tune-up, obviously. For Carlton, it'll be good to see, you know, which of their stars are, are in good shape early. We know Sam Walsh missed a lot of the preseason, if not all of it last season. He's a player I've talked a lot about on this channel this off-season, and, uh, you know, maybe someone like an Ashton Moyer. Again, I'm not sure 100% if he's going to feature in this game. And as for the Cats, we will see as well exposure to some of these younger guys. Toby Conway should be featuring this game. Only played one game at AFL level so far. Same thing with Jai Clark. Shannon Neal, Mitch Nevitt, again, so Geelong, another team that has a lot of under-22 talent, a lot of veterans, a lot of under-22 talent. So the preseason games, based on their past selection history, is our best chance to see what that underbelly of talent looks like. As for the Q Clash, you know, we kind of know what to expect from Brisbane. What I'd say is that Logan Morris has apparently kicked five in the intra-club last week, which I think is impressive. Again, it's an intra-club. Five goals doesn't mean as much as it does even in a preseason competitive hit out, let alone round one. But could be a little bit of a smoky to contribute in his first season AFL level from what I'm hearing. Lockie Neal will also play is the team news that I have discovered. As for the Gold Coast Suns, obviously a lot of young talent on that list, but probably the most headlined one in Jed Walter. If you've missed it, broke his collarbone a few weeks back and uh, he's going to miss a significant part of the season. Then on Friday the 23rd, we have the Bulldogs and Hawthorne playing at Witten Park. First chance to look at Riley Sanders. That will be an interesting one. How the midfield dynamic potentially works. Probably not going to get a great feel for that because different players will be on different minutes and different rotations, but we will presumably see Riley Sanders in this role. We'll also see potentially Nick Caulfield and James Harms. Hawthorne will be an interesting one. You know, I haven't been able to cover it in a specific video yet, but the injury issues surrounding Hawthorne at the moment are definitely cause for concern. So to be clear, James Blank has just done an ACL and maybe not necessarily an A-grade key position defender, but you look at the depth chart of Hawthorne, and I would argue an important piece of the puzzle. It does severely weaken their depth. So James Blank is probably gonna miss the entire season. Will Day is in doubt for round one, I believe, with that stress fracture. Dylan Moore, I think, is recovering from glandular fever, a very important player for Hawthorne, a high quality player at that. Again, a chance for round one, but probably not going to feature at least in this weekend of games. And then Chankuth Giath as well has done a hamstring injury as well. So they're a little bit exposed at this current point in time. And Hawthorne will, I guess, want to use these games as a chance to unearth some of their depth. The Saints then play Essendon. There's a lot of players on both of these lists that I think are talented and, you know, Particularly at Essendon, I think there's a few players reaching that age where you'd expect them to break out. But they've also recruited a bunch of players. So the new look dynamic with Ben Mackay in that team, Xavier Dersma, can he really entrench himself in this team? We're expecting to see Nick Martin unleashed off a halfback flank. That will be interesting to see in action. And I believe that Sam Draper is not going to be playing due to a groin injury. For the Saints though, you know, Darcy Wilson is a player I've talked about this preseason. Obviously, Machido, Owens, Philippou. Can these guys continue to incrementally improve? Obviously, they can, but they're players I'm going to be looking out for after a yet another preseason. Riley Bonner should be in the mix to play in this particular game, but I do believe that Paddy Dow has been ruled out with a knee injury. Then there is also a showdown on this particular game, and Dan Curtin is by far and away the, the player that I'm most intrigued to see at the Adelaide Crows. A very talked about draft pick because of the nature of the fact that five clubs tried to trade for him. And also a red hot chance to be in the mix for the Rising Star for sure. For the power, like I've said all off season, they've kind of transplanted in four key position players that should feature heavily in their best 22. And this is a really good chance to see how that dynamic holds up under a competitive bout. So you've got Saba Radagalia, Brennan Zerk Thatcher down back, and then two rucks in Soldo and Sweet. Then we have a derby on Saturday, February 24th, down at Minerals Resources Park. For West Coast, again, I'll probably cover my thoughts more in depth on the True Eagle channel, but I think just team cohesion is one thing. A lot of players who haven't played a lot of footy together, senior players who have missed football, new guys into the setup. I like what I saw in the intra club, but I guess, you know, just getting that exposure to playing together and limiting injuries, of course. As for the Dockers, I'm kind of intrigued to see 
to what extent Nat 5 will be unleashed as a midfielder. It has been talked about in the media, but you never know until you see it. They could actually have a bit more of an experienced midfield this year if Fife is into the mix. I think that really does change their dynamic a little bit. You know, I'm not expecting a 32-year-old Nat 5 to get back to that Brownlow medal form, but as a big body, mature midfielder with experience, he could add a different look to a midfield that is kind of strong on paper with Caleb Sarong, Brayshaw, and then Jager Amira as well as another senior head. And I'd also be intrigued to see, you know, what players come up to fill the void of small forward. Like, because Jack Deline make that role his own as an 18-year-old? It's possible. Seems like a talented kid. Who's going to take Liam Henry's wing? There's, there's options there for Fremantle, but who rises to the top will be an interesting watch this preseason. Anyway, guys, that is my take on the first round of the preseason games. Those are the things I'm going to be looking out for. Those are the fixtures if you couldn't find them anywhere because it is a little bit of a disjointed preseason. Now, like I said, the week two of the preseason game starts not too far after week one. So in between, I will do my best to cover what's happened in week one of the preseason and I'll cover you know, the games uh, in week two and things I'm going to be looking for again. But I hope you got something out of this video. Make sure you check out True Eagle if you want Eagle-specific content. By all means, consider the newsletter. It's just a new way I'm thinking of adding content, adding some value, giving a bit of a different look to True Footy, and uh, I'm excited. It's been a busy preseason. I'm exhausted. I've got two videos coming out on True Eagle today. I've got two videos on True Footy. I'm happy to be here. It takes a crazy person to do what I do, and I'm super crazy.